Welcome to our video on how to install and configure a vSphere storage appliance. This demonstration will show how VSA installs with just a few clicks, enabling users to get the full range of vSphere features, including vSphere HA, vMotion, and vSphere DRS, without having to purchase a physical storage array to provide shared storage. On the first installation screen, the New Installation option is selected by default. This screen provides more detail about the features that will be configured by the installer, such as the VSA cluster itself, vMotion, and the vSphere HA cluster. The next step is to select the data center from our vCenter inventory. In this example, we are going to build a three-node VSA cluster. We can see that the data center pod13-dc has three hosts. A host audit is run by the installer to verify that it is also compatible with VSA. Note that the host audit divides the hosts by different processor types. Hosts used for VSA must have the same processor type for vMotion compatibility. Now we'll click on the first host on the list, then the second. And at this point, we can build a two-node cluster. But in this example, we select a third host because we are building a three-node VSA cluster. We can see now that all three hosts have been placed in the VSA cluster. They will be placed into a vSphere HA cluster also and then we'll have a vMotion network configured between them. However, we must provide networking details for all VSA cluster members, so we'll click Next to go to the networking screen. This is where we provide networking details. The first IP address is used by the cluster leader. The cluster leader is simply a VSA cluster member with a role to communicate to the vCenter server. A neat feature of the installer is that when we type in the cluster IP address, the wizard automatically generates the rest of the IP addresses in ascending order. Users can also modify the individual IP addresses separately. To begin with, we will type in the cluster IP address. In VSA 1.0, users had to ensure that the VSA IP addresses were all in the same subnet and shared the same gateway as the ESXi hosts on which they reside. However, in VSA 5.1, the vCenter server can reside on a different subnet to the ESXi hosts and can still deploy and manage the VSA. This feature is very useful for customers considering the VSA for a remote office or a branch office. Next, we'll click on one of the hosts to check its IP settings. We click on the host Dash 14. Now, we can see various IP address information populated for the VSA cluster member, including its management IP address, and its NFS or data store IP address. Note also that a static IP address can be configured for the vMotion network, or it can be left at the default of DHCP. We will give it a static IP address. Finally, note that the VLAN can be configured for both the front-end management network and the back-end network. Let's give the front-end management network a 1955 VLAN, and for the back-end network, let's give it 1192. The VLAN IDs are also propagated to the other VSA cluster members. Let's click on another host to see. Note that the IP addresses are automatically assigned to this host, as are the VLAN IDs. We'll click on the last host to verify that it also has a correct IP address and VLAN IDs assignment. We can see that the IP addresses all appear to be in order. Now, we simply click on the Next button to proceed to the next installation screen. We now come to a screen that is new in VSA 5.1. In VSA 1.0, all the local storage had to be assigned to the VSA. But in VSA 5.1, a subset of the local storage can be assigned to the VSA instead of all of the local storage. In this example, we will set the VSA size to 400 gigabytes instead of the maximum. We see the slide bar and capacity fields in the table adjust accordingly. This brings us to the Format Disks screen. This screen allows us to zero out the disks. We will leave the disk at the default, which is Format Disk on First Access, and click Next to continue. Scrolling down gives us a view of all the settings in the VSA cluster. A new feature of VSA 5.1 is the increased security using HTTPS or SSL for communication. Before the installation can proceed, we must first confirm acceptance of the VSA security certificates. Finally, we click the Install button to commence the installation of the VSA cluster. We must acknowledge that the VSA cluster installation could delete data from the local disks of ESXi servers. So ensure the data has been saved, and then click Yes to continue. Now the installation will start. By observing the vCenter inventory for the tasks that are initiated during the install, 
we can observe network changes, like a new vSphere HA cluster being built, storage appliance being deployed and configured, and NFS data storage being presented to the ESXi hosts. Now, we have successfully deployed the VSA. On the VSA Manager tab, we'll close down the tasks to get a better management view of the VSA. Note the recommendation to change the VSA password. By default, all VSA appliances are shipped with a default password for security reasons. The recommendation is to change it from the default. Now we'll click on the Close button on the installer screen. And now we can see the full view of our VSA cluster. This data stores view shows us the VSA data stores. Since we have three ESXi hosts in our cluster, each of them presents a single NFS data store. Thus, we have three data stores in the management view. As seen here, we can monitor data store size and usage, which VSA member is exporting it, where its mirror replica is held, and which IP address is used to export it. Next, we will look at the cluster from a VSA member perspective. To do this, we will just click on the Appliances button. The first view of the cluster member details information like the management IP address, the backend IP address, which data store each member is exporting, and which ESXi host is hosting the VSA. The final management monitoring window that we'll select is the map view. Here, we can see a map view showing a relationship between the various objects in the VSA cluster, including ESXi servers, VSA appliances, and data stores along with their mirror copies. As observed in this demonstration, VSA is very easy to deploy. Many of the configuration tasks, such as network setup and vSphere HA deployment, are done by the installer. So, the product can be deployed by first-time customers who might not be well-versed in vSphere.